<laughs> so how are you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato and you are watching Nature Now. Let me tell you, that tropical storm just wrapped up about an hour or two ago and it wrecked some havoc. It was here all night and most of the day creating a lot of damage. There's downed trees all over the place, branches everywhere, there's fire engines and cop cars driving here and there. Uh, pretty exciting stuff. But this video, however, is actually a bit of a compilation video from the past like 30 or 40 days of me making it out little bits here and there. I hope you like it because there's some pretty cool stuff in this video. Let's get started. The size of this hail. Wow. There's a tornado siren outside, and it's the first time I ever heard one. I mean, I was in a tornado once outside when I was a kid. But wow. There's a... That's crazy looking. Of course, birds have wonderful hearing. I mean, just listen to their songs and companion calls that even if you're just a few feet away, you can barely detect them. So hearing a worm or perhaps a beetle or something a couple inches beneath the soil surface makes quite a ruckus to a bird. So that piebald deer was actually filmed right over there. And a pretty cool thing is there's actually another one about two miles from here at the park I work for. And that's kind of cool because there's only about 2% of them in the white-tailed deer population. So these two must be related. I'm sure you're familiar with this plant. It's Multiflora Rose. A lot of people find it a nuisance because, well, it's quite the invasive plant.
So the reason why we have so many invasive species from Asia is the fact that certain parts of Asia share the exact same climate and habitats that we have here. That's why so many species can thrive over here and of course they don't have any natural predators so there's nothing to really keep them in check. It's been a lot of fun filming this deer here. Unfortunately, it came really close to me and a family came strolling through and their little boy decided to chase the deer. The father tried to stop him, but the boy proclaimed he just couldn't help it. Well, that might be a little frustrating for me. I can't say I blame him. I'm sure you're familiar with thistle, but this particular species is musk thistle. What a beautiful looking plant. Another cool thing about thistle is the fact that it's related to sunflowers. If you look really closely, you can actually tell, but I'm sure a lot of people would find that pretty surprising. A cool story about thistle is back during the reign of King Alexander III, King Heaton of Norway invaded Scotland. The story goes that he instructed some of his soldiers to take off their footwear so that they could sneak up on the sleeping enemy. Apparently some of them stepped on some thistle in their bare feet and they couldn't contain their screams. That alerted their enemies, the Scottish, that an invasion was on the way, it allowed them to wake up in the middle of the night and defend themselves and ultimately win the day. I don't know if that story is true, but it's a good story and that's the reason thistle is the national plant of Scotland. So I've seen this fox several times in the past and I can assure you right now, it doesn't have rabies or anything like that wrong with it. It's just that this park has a steady flow of visitors pretty much all year. And this fox has several mouths to feed. So it's gotten quite used to going in and out amongst all those visitors and search for food for her babies. Unfortunately, even though foxes are pretty much my favorite mammal, I don't really have any decent footage of them. But let me tell you, the Wildlife Brothers have some top-notch footage of this vixen. And they're coming out with a video all about her pretty soon. So when you get the chance, definitely stop by their channel, the Wildlife Brothers, and say hi to them for me. Check out this cool little mushroom. I'm not sure what species it is, but it's pretty awesome nonetheless. So this is a slime mold plasmodia. I know I've got videos on slime molds in the past, but slime molds are so exciting I can't help to film them. Especially in this stage because I don't think I filmed it before. Slime molds are very easily mistaken for mushrooms or fungi, but they're not. They spend most of their life in a tiny slug-like amoeba form, moving about the landscape and feeding. Then they develop into a plasmodia stage, which branches out like this, looking like a lot of veins and networks. What's really, really amazing about them is the fact that when they're in this stage, they might actually join up with another one and they'll exchange memories and then divide and go about their way. How we know this is scientists had built various mazes and placed the slime molds within those mazes. At various points in the mazes, unpleasant stimuli were introduced. 
The slime molds then learned different routes to avoid those stimuli. After that experiment, the scientists introduced the experienced slime molds with other slime molds that never encountered those stimuli. And then those inexperienced slime molds avoided the stimuli as if they had been there before. I mean, amazing. These slime molds are meeting up, joining, and then exchanging memories and information before they divide and go about their separate lives. Tell me that's not incredible. This, of course, is a green frog. They come in a wide variety of colors. Generally, anything from brown to gray or entirely green is common. My favorite individuals, however, are the ones that sport all three colors, like this one here.